Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about analyzing segments in hydrocarbon prospect analysis. So what geologists can do in oil and gas exploration is trying to make a more rigorous assessment of volumes that we may prove up with an exploration well. So why segment prospects? Well, some prospects are really simple. You've got a single reservoir believed to be fully connected. A dream when that happens, less things to worry about. But reality, not always like this. You can have a prospect in a single play that may be segmented by faults. You can have a prospect which is divided in different reservoir facies of different quality. You have to analyze both facies together. Then you may have an exploration well which tests separate which prospects, which may or may not be linked, belonging to different plays. Now, these segments may have significant interdependencies, but may also have independent elements. So there's some complexity there, and we need to think, we need to uh, try to understand what's going on to make a good analysis. But these segments need to be evaluated in a combined aggregate way to develop a logical trading decision, i.e. how much volume you're going to add with your exploration well. So let's have a look at different segment types. So this is a map view of a prospect which is divided by faults. So you have a fault here, fault here. So you have segment A, segment B, segment C. Drill your exploration well in segment A, you prove up segment A, but you don't prove up segment C and segment B. The chance of success may increase, but you don't guarantee them. You may also test two different plays with the same well, which is called a stacked uh, prospect or stacked prospects, which will have a seedling layer between them. So layer A, layer B, two are separate, need to be analyzed separately, but they'll be drilled by the same well, so economics need to be aggregated. Or you may have a situation where you have two different reservoir targets that are linked, then hydrodynamic communications, but have quite significantly different properties. And obviously to do within that, you will have some differences in chance of success. So for example, if layer A is significantly better than layer B, layer B's reservoir chance of success might be worse. Put this in a 3D sense, so this is your lease or license area. These are potential wells, this is play one, this is play two, and these are potential prospects that you may test. Some of the prospects may be split by faults into independent segments. Uh, some wells may drill several plays at the same time. So you need to try to make an analysis of all of the above to develop an exploration program that's gonna go get you the most value um, in order to increase the value for your uh, company. So a little bit on risk dependency. So the segments will have risk dependency. So for example, you may have a situation where source presence is almost always linked if, they're two, if the two plays are part of the same petroleum system. Trap presence is also linked, particularly in stack prospects. You know, if you have an anticline, everything is there. Hydrocarbon charge may also be linked for stack prospects, but may also be separate. Reservoirs may be linked, may also be separate. Seal effectiveness may or may not be linked. And you look at that in a form of a decision tree. So drill segment A can be a success or it can be dry. If it's a success, you drill segment B. Uh, which all may also be a success and dry. So you have, in this particular case, four outcomes. And you have probabilities for each branch, and that's how you tend to do the analysis. So looking at the fault block segments. So we have, we have an expiration well. Here we have segment A. Here we have a fault separating two of them. This has a possible hydrocarbon water contact. We don't know the sealing nature of the fault. Could be fully sealing, could be partially sealing. We don't know. We also have a potential hydrocarbon water contact on this uh, side. Now, we're looking at reservoir distribution, we're looking at uh, seal distribution, we're looking at charge. The key point here is success in segment A does not guarantee success in segment B. will increase the chance of success, but won't guarantee it. So if we look at um, the volumetric analysis here, you will do a stochastic addition of the two segments. So you'll have a probability distribution here and a probability distribution here. And I have a video on that, how, how stochastic analysis is done on my channel. Please have a look at that. There's also a possibility that the two fault blocks may have significantly different fluids, and there's a field I worked on where that precisely happened. We had uh, one segment with a very rich gas concept, another segment with a significantly leaner gas concept. It has somewhat different charging routes. That's how we worked out what was happening, but it was a bit of a surprise when that happened. So if you look at chances of success, so this is your pre-drill assessment, 37%, uh, which is quite high for, for a prospect, even though it's in a mature basin. Source presence 1, trap presence 0.95, reservoir 0.7, source 0.7, charge 0.75, trap 0.75, 37%. So if segment A is successful, this has a significant impact on segment B. So again, source presence 1, trap presence 1, reservoir goes up to 0.9, source effectiveness goes up to 0.95, trap effectiveness goes up to 0.95. It could still fail, but 
probably won't. You know, 0.81 is a very high chance of success. So again, if you drill a successful well in segment A, the whole value of your discovery, as it is now, is significantly upgraded. However, if segment A fails, segment B, while not 100% written off, the chance of success will significantly decline and you probably won't be drilling it. So now let's have a look at stacked plays. So stacked plays is a situation where you have two different reservoirs, one on top of each other, with a ceiling unit or what you believe might be a ceiling unit between them. And a single exploration well, because the two are on top of each other, will test both, both plays. Now, it could be a situation that two targets are completely independent. Could be that they have some dependency. We don't know. So you need to aggregate the volume of the, of the two prospects together in order to make a decision on your exploration well, because your economics would, uh, would uh, be needing for that, because you have an economic value for this, economic value for this, and economic value for the aggregate. And you can do this on a soft piece of software like GeoX, which you use for analysis of uh, exploration prospects. So you can have several different scenarios. You can have full dependency. If A works, B will work. So you've got a very high linkage. Um, this is a seal between the two of them, but you've got the same trap, etc., etc., etc. That's possible. You can also have a situation where you have some dependency. So where your trap, your source, and your charge are fully dependent, but your reservoir and seal are independent. So for example, you could have a situation where if this seal fails, prospect B fails, but prospect A still succeeds because the top seal here works. You could also have a situation where this seal is successful, this seal is not successful, so this is breached, but this is successful. Or you can have full independence, where everything is fully independent. So you need to work an appropriate method for specific cases where you have it. So look using your information to make the right decision. So looking at, uh, again, decision tree. So again, you have four different uh, outcomes. So this is uh, outcome for, for one layer. So you have 0.9 for trap presence, 1 for source, 0.7 for charge, 0.7 for reservoir, 0.7 for seal, 31%. So full dependency, both of them work. You know, use a situation where if A is success, B will be a success. If A is dry, B will dry. Well, that's possible. But you could also be in a situation where you have four outcomes. So independent stack prospects. So you can have um, A and B work. So 10%. A works, B dry. A dry, B works, or both A and B are dry. So going through this, having a stack prospect significantly increases your chance of having some success. But how realistic is it that both A and B are fully independent? Well, in some cases it's possible, in some cases maybe not. You need to try to use your judgment. Then you have a situation where you have... Um, semi-dependent place. So you have a situation where you have uh, some common elements. So for example, you have your seal, you have, uh, you have your trap, you have your source that are fully dependent, and then you have reservoir and seal, which are to some extent charged, which are less dependent. So you have A and B working together, which will be this, A and B, A success, B dry, A dry, B success, or both dry. So again, you have these numbers here because you have some of the dependencies. So if you have A success, A dry, B uh, volume, or B dry. Now, you have slightly larger chance of success, but you will have slightly smaller volumes within this particular aggregation. So when you look here, if you have fully independent, you have 31% chance. If you have three elements dependent, you have a slightly higher number. Or you have fully independent because you're effectively having two throws of the dice on the same situation. So that's looking at uh, dependencies of stack plays. You can also have a situation where you have asymmetric segments. So if A is so much larger than B, well, are you going to actually even consider B? Maybe you just have it as an add-on and you make a main decision on A because it's so much larger. But that would come up in the decision tree anyway. Another situation of types of asymmetric segments is if you have layer A with high porosity, high net to gross, so that's a better quality rock. Again, I have videos on porosity and net to gross on my channel. Or you have B layer, which is lower porosity, lower net to gross. Now, you treat them as two segments, but they would be linked because they're in hydrodynamic communication with a common all water contact. But you'd only really risk the reservoir element, which is separate because everything else is, uh, is linked together. 
because the chance of reservoir working for layer B is significantly worse than chance of reservoir working for layer A. And need to add the volume. So criticism of uh, the situation for segmented prospects is that it makes things more complicated. Well, and makes it harder to reach positive decisions to drill. Well, segmentation is real. You've got to account for it. And in volumetric tools like GeoX allow you to sum segments within a single prospect and also allow you to sum stack prospects with estimation dependencies. And then you use the rolled up resource in your economic analysis. Question is, should you enroll small additional segments? Well, you could try, but will it distort your thinking? So again, understanding the complexity, involving the complexity. So to sum up, segmental analysis accounts for the perceived complexity in a, in a prospect that isn't simple. And you need to do that to try to make the right decision or try to make a logical decision. You can also outline a future potential program. So if you have success in A, you might go to B, you might have a well in C. So you might need two appraisal wells to get the project over the line. Alternatively, if the volume in A is so large, you might just drill B and C in the development stage and uh, not do the appraisal. But again, you need to think about what's going to happen here. And decision trees can help you illustrate the possible outcomes. And you have diagrams to explain the situation to fellow geoscientists and management. Now, the stack prospects do increase the chances of success when exploration well, but aggregated stack volumes may actually be smaller than you think. So happy exploring. Thank you very much. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.